machining. With the machine compensated for lateral runout, begin the machining process with the scratch cut. Your goal with the scratch cut is to reference the thinnest part of the rotor as you will be adding your cut depth to this point. Measuring the rotor with a micrometer should always be part of the job. If you measure the rotor from outside to inside in three places, you'll be able to see if the rotor has taper as well as whether the rotor has enough material left to be machined and still be above minimum specification. Generally, you will be removing at least four thousandths per side, or eight thousandths total, from the rotor beyond your scratch depth. If there are gouges in the rotor, use the deepest gouge as the reference point. With the tool arm separated enough to clear the rotor, wind the cutting head in to about a quarter inch over the outer edge of the rotor surface and make a light scratch cut on both sides. Start on the inner side of the rotor first and then on the outer side as you can hear the rear scratch but can't see it. Snug the tool arm lock knob and zero set the dial so you have a reference point for the rotor face. Then loosen the knob and back off the tool arms and wind them into an eighth of an inch from the start point of your cut on the inside edge of the rotor. Repeat the scratch test to see if the cutting tips touch the rotor at zero. If not, establish a new zero reference and wind the tips in to the starting point, paying particular attention to not hitting any obstructions like the hat of the rotor on the outside or the caliper bracket on the inside. The depth of cut you select is determined by several factors. First, the type of brake rotor. For standard size vented rotors on cars or light trucks, remove between four thousandths and twenty thousandths per side. For thin, solid rear rotors on cars, remove between two and a half thousandths and seven and a half thousandths per side. Other factors that will help determine the depth of cut are the amount of disc thickness variation, the taper of the rotor, amount of rust buildup, depth of gouges in the rotor surface, lastly and most importantly, the rotor's minimum allowable thickness or machine to specification must be adhered to. On the speed lock cutting head, each line on the knob represents two and a half thousandths. There is a stationary reference line for you to use when setting the cut depth. On the G2X cutting head, each line on the knob represents one thousandth. Once your depth of cut is dialed in, lock the tool arm lock knobs and shut off the machine using either the micro switch by the cutting head or the main on off switch on the electrical box. This is the last chance to double check setup before starting the cut. With the machine turned off, check the following. Tool arm lock levers or knobs, depending on model, should be tight. Cutting head lateral slide lock knob should be tight. Make certain the stop cam is in position. Check to make sure the draw bar is tight. Depress clutch knob for cutting head feed. Check the disc lock lever on the trolley to make sure it's snug, but do not over tighten. Next, install the correct silencer. There are three types depending on the rotor type you are working with. The 50-703 is the standard for regular size vented rotors on cars and small trucks. The 50-754 is for solid thin rotors on rear of cars. The 50-744 is for larger rotors on cars and trucks up through medium duty. All silencers should be installed completely over the rotor with the grooves in the blocks over the cutting tip screw heads and the spring behind the cutting head lateral lock lever or knob. Next, position the chip tray under the cutting action. Lastly, start the motor and stand clear of the lathe. When the cut is complete on the first side and the lathe is shut off by the stop cam, carefully remove the lathe from the vehicle by loosening the draw bar. Use caution as to not crash the cutting tips into any parts of the vehicle as you remove the lathe. Now, either install at least two nuts on the rotor you've just matched on the first side, or index the rotor to the hub with the crayon from the toolbox and remove the rotor to make sure it won't fall on the floor. 
If you don't take this step, then you will undo the perfect rotor hub match you just created.